That's right. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, for our announcements today, well, first of all, thank you for the lovely rain. It's so beautiful. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, the office will be closed tomorrow, the 31st, to observe Memorial Day. Bible school, July 19th through the 22nd, from 9 to 12 each morning. And we need help. We need teachers. We need shepherds. We need all kinds of help and lots of youth. We need your help too, so please think about that. Local Missions Work Day will take place this coming Saturday, June the 5th. Meet in the church's north parking lot, that's this way, on the corner of 6th and Quinn Street at 8 a.m. This is a wonderful opportunity for fellowship and to serve as the hands and feet of Christ. Yes. You do not need special skills or tools, only a good attitude. <laughs> Prime Timers Breakfast will take place this coming Saturday, June 5th at 8.30 a.m. at the Ambassador Restaurant. This group is open to anyone age 60 or over, and they would love to have you. Marriage Enrichment Class, starting Sunday, June the 6th, 7 to 8 p.m. in Pastor Dave's Sunday School Room. Child care is available for children 1 to 12 years old, Teenagers can join the youth yes. for our spiritual family and any of our friends. Video study is called Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage. Yes. You can text His Needs, Her Needs, optional, Life Innovations Couples Profile. Yes. May we grow through in devotion, communication, and prayer. So that sounds like a fun class. Consider it. Sunday, June 6th, 7 seven to eight o'clock in the mar for the marriage enrichment class. Label ladies, goodness sake, blah, blah, blah. ladies Bible study takes place Wednesdays at six. And I don't think they're meeting on Thursdays, right? Just on Wednesday night now for the summer. Is that right? Thank you. Okay, Methodist men's breakfast will be held Wednesday morning from 6.30 to 7.30 in the fellowship hall. Invite a friend and join for good food, fellowship, and devotion. Yum, yum. Early Watch Prayer Group meets for fellowship, worship, and intercession Monday through Saturday from 5 to 6 a.m. in the chapel. Come and join when you can. Please fill out a visitor card if you are a visitor or a spiritual resp response card located in your pew and drop it in the offering plate or the chest or text your contact information or request Pastor Dave at 580-649-9190. Yes. We want to be a church family where you are known, loved, and supported. Yes. Pastor Dave is committed to visiting each family of our church. This can be at your home or in his home or at a restaurant. Please let him know when a good day and time will be to visit with your family. Any other announcements? Anyone? Pastor Dave? Okay. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Wonderful. Now, please join me for the call to worship, and I'll see if I can <clears throat> get myself under control. And I know, but goodness, I can't. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. This is on commissioned. Go and preach the gospel. All authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Lord Jesus, Lord of lords and King of kings, we are honored to be called by you and entrusted with preaching your gospel and sharing your love. Go and teach others all that I have taught you. You are my witnesses. Lord Jesus, Lord of lords and King of kings, we are honored to be called by you and entrusted Go and help others to believe, receive, and obey me. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Lord Jesus, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, we are honored to be called by you and entrusted with preaching your gospel and sharing your love. Go and be bold and strong. Remember, I am with you always. And the Holy Spirit will fill you, sanctify you, and empower you. Lord Jesus, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, we are honored to be called by you and entrusted with preaching your gospel and sharing your love. Amen. 
almighty God, Father, Son, and Spirit, we are eternally grateful to have our sins forgiven, our names written in heaven, and to be your adopted sons and daughters. Please help us to shine the Christ light brightly and proclaim your good news effectively. Amen. Now let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Let's all stand together and turn in your red hymnal to 571, or you may sing from our screen, Go, Make of All Disciples. You may be seated. How glad I am to see each of you with us in worship this morning. It is my earnest prayer, usually on a daily basis, that God's presence and power will be experienced by each of us as we worship together. Our prayer today focuses on this theme of being commissioned, commissioned by God Himself. So join me as we pray in unison. I am no longer my own, but yours, almighty God. Put me to what you will. Place me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me work hard for you or be set aside for you, praised for you or criticized for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, most wonderful and holy God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth let it also be made in heaven. Amen. We're going to ask if our ushers will come forward to receive tithe and offering today. Our stewardship reflection. Remember, stewardship is far more than just finances. It's how we respond to God and offer Him our lives, a living sacrifice. But James chapter 2, verse 15 says the following. Suppose a brother 
or a sister is without clothes and daily food, if one of you says to them, go in peace, be warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? I'm so proud to mention this morning that Victory Memorial, this small part of God's global church, has a great big heart. People come here all the time, hungry, and we send them away with something to eat. And they come without shelter, and we put them up, whether it's in the motel or maybe uh, in our local shelter that we support. Many come here needing a prescription or a bus ticket, or they need some counsel or a prayer, and they receive in abundance because of the love and the generosity of our church. And I am so proud to be a part of what God is doing right here in Guymon. Thank you for your love for Christ and your faithful witness as his disciples. Let us pray together. Father, what a privilege it is to gather for worship today on this Memorial Day weekend. We remember those who have served and sacrificed on our behalf. Those who have loved us and have already graduated, we remember them. We honor them today. And we honor you, our creator, our redeemer, our daily provider. What a privilege it is today to return to you a small portion of what you have given to us. Receive your tithe. Receive our free will offering. I pray you will bless the gift and the giver and that all that happens here today will glorify your name. It's in the name of Jesus we pray, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Stand and let's sing together our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above you, heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Good job. You may be seated. We are blessed this morning to have our chancel choir share with us an anthem. Love divine. Thank you, chancel choir. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Matthew. We small but mighty. Joy. 
might know that that was Pastor Gary Holderman's favorite hymn, right there in the top favorites, maybe, number one, I'm not sure, but I know it was one of his favorites. And the wonderful gift of hymns, if you'll read them, they tell the gospel story, the unfolding story of God and God's creation and the fall and redemption and how we get to know God and grow in God and finally go home. Hymns are a beautiful story of the grace of God, and that was one of Gary's favorites as it speaks of the gospel and the love of God. Thank you for that choir. You were small and mighty. I heard those voices so clearly, the four of you. It was really beautiful. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Sandy. Before I call the children up, I must mention I'm wearing some love today. Brian Wright, my dear brother, this was one of his ties. And today I get to wear it and remember him. And not just him. I've had many along the way who have loved me and helped me and prayed for me, been kind to me. And I carry them with me in my heart, as do you. Memorial Day is not just a day to pay respects, but it's a day to remember how we have been loved and helped along the way and how many have graduated ahead of us, but it's not going to be long and we're going to have our turn too. We're all going home. We're all going to meet with God somewhere along the line, and I want to make sure I'm ready for that appointment, and I want you to be ready. And so we remember with joy those who have graduated. Andy just shared that his mom passed away just recently, and uh, we rejoice that she's not suffering anymore, but it's sad to lose somebody that we have loved and known so long. It was so hard for me to deal with my mom's death, but we know that she's in the hands of God, and so we celebrate all of those who have gone home ahead of us today. Children, if you'll come and join me this morning, we'll have a children's conversation together. Help me this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes. Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tell. Yeah, for, for Orlando, come right here with that beautiful oak leaf. Oh, come sit with us, please. We love you. All right, today we're going to talk about something important. Commission. Now, I remember when I was in sales, I liked the word Commission because it meant money. If you earn a little commission, it means you get a little money. If you make sales, you get a little commission. Ooh, I like that. I try to make lots of sales so that there'd be a good extra paycheck at the end of the month. You get a salary and commission on top. And we know about earning a little commission, but that's not the commission I'm talking about today. I'm talking about when you go to the service, like if you're gonna become a soldier or a sailor or an airman, you can actually either study or you can enroll for a special training so you can receive a commission. Normally an officer's rank. You can become a lieutenant or you can become a captain or you can become a colonel or if you really go all the way up, you can become a general. And what commissioning does is it gives you rank, special recognition but not just rank, authority, responsibility, opportunity to serve, to train, to help others, to lead others. And you know the best kind of leaders? They don't lead from behind with a stick. They lead up front. Come and follow me. I will show you how to do it. Well, Jesus has given each one of us a commission. But this is where it starts. You first got to know him. You've got to love him. You've got to be a part of his family. You can't receive a commission if you aren't a part of the family. But if you are, if you're a disciple, if you know Jesus, then he's going to give you rank. He's going to give you a commission. And this is what he's going to ask you to do, Rebecca. He's going to ask you to tell others about him. If you, not, if you know Jesus and you love Jesus, he wants you to tell others what a wonderful Savior he is. What a privilege it is to have him as your Lord. How he wants to help and heal, forgive, 
how he wants to make you a part of his family. It's the most exciting job any one of us could ever have, to have rank, lieutenant, captain, colonel, for Jesus, for the kingdom of God, and then to go and tell others who he is and how much he loves them and how he wants all of us to be a part of his family. So I want you to know, you might not know this, but God wants to give you rank. We used to say lieutenants have got a pip on their shoulder, a little star normally in our South African defense force. Or if you're a captain, three stars. Uh huh. Recognition that you are a leader, but not just recognition, but a job to do. Helping, serving, leading others. I hope you will do the same. I hope I'll do the same. Let's pray together. Everybody close your eyes. Let's pray together. Lord, we want to be a part of your family. We want to be in the Lord's army. We want you to give us rank, responsibility, authority, so that we can go out and shine your light, so that we can share the good news of how you love us, how your blood forgives sins, how you have a wonderful purpose for all of us. Help us each one to receive the commission to be a part of you and your purpose. We prayed in Jesus' name and all the children said, Amen. There's going to be candy for you waiting at the end of the service. You did a good job. Remember, we love you. And God loves you even more than we do. Wow! Yes! We are so very proud of our children. We are a little thin today because it's Memorial Day weekend. Many are on a little getaway and we wish them well, safety and blessings and renewal. But for each of us that are here, welcome to worship. So glad to have you with us. And especially our children. We love to see our children in worship. Join me as we pray for illumination, as we ask God to take the written word and make it come alive that we may hear the voice of God speak to us today. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, please speak loudly and clearly to our hearts and to our minds today. Reveal your presence and your purpose vividly to us again this morning. Help us to understand the importance of hearing your voice, trusting your grace, and waiting for your provision. We want to please you and fulfill your great commission for our lives and for our world in Christ and for his glory alone. Amen. The scripture today comes out of Matthew chapter 28, reading from verse 16 to verse 20. This passage is often referred to as the great commission, the greatest of all commissions that any one of us could ever receive. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A couple of questions for you to ponder as we examine this text and apply it to our lives, maybe you can speak to your family and friends as you have opportunity to do so. How do you understand the Great Commission? What kind of impact has it had on your life? What effect has the Great Commission had upon your life? And number three, how can you live out the promise and the purpose of the Great Commission. What concrete actions will you take this week? 
as I read and thought and prayed this week about this idea of receiving a commission, I was reminded of my years in the service, two years of conscripted service, 10 years of active reserve duty. And uh, if ever you get involved in the service, whether you become a Marine or a, a soldier in the army or an airman or a coast guard, there's a process that will take place. The first is you'll hear about it. You'll hear about the service. Maybe it'll interest you. You might read and research what goes on in one of those branches of the armed service. And if you really feel it, kind of compelled or excited about a career in the service, you'll get together with others that have actually served or are serving, and finally you'll come up to a recruiter and you'll say, hmm, I'm interested in becoming a Marine. Can you tell me more? And he'll sit down with you and visit with you, he or she. And if you want to go all the way, they'll say, let's get you signed up. And in several of the branches, if you sign up, you get a little bonus, a signing bonus. I'm told that if you're a Marine, you don't get any bonus. <laughs> they consider it a privilege just to offer you the opportunity to be one of the brave and the strong Marines. But in many service branches, they'll actually give you a little sign-up bonus. And then they'll say, listen, this is the day you've got to report for service or duty. You've got to show up. And on that day, you'll join all the other recruits and the fun begins. All of a sudden, they'll get you outfitted. They'll get you into a structure, a routine where there'll be fitness training and skill development and they'll give you a speciality that you're going to finally be trained in. And when everything has been completed, they'll say, now the real fun begins. You're off on adventures all over the world to defend us from enemies without or within, okay? Now, I use that to illustrate that if you're somebody that is career-minded, ambitious, you can start going up the ranks. You could maybe become an officer. You could go and get trained. If you come in with a, a college degree, that helps. You can immediately choose to be an officer and you can get some rank. And with rank comes responsibility. With rank comes leadership. With rank comes a greater investment of yourself within the life of the service. Because it's not just about you anymore, it's about many who are looking to you and depending on you. And if you make it a lifetime career, I've had a few friends in the Air Force, they've gone all the way to becoming generals. Lots of, lots of education, lots of deployments, lots of experience, a whole lifetime of investment into the Air Force or whatever branch it is. I use that to challenge you and to challenge me that your relationship with God is every bit as intentional and as real as finding out about the service, meeting with a recruiter, signing up, getting involved, being trained, being equipped, being deployed, spending your life as a Marine or a, an airman or a soldier or a sailor. I've got a retired general who was involved with the Air Force and the Marines and uh, the imprint of the service is still with him. He's already gray. He's been out for over 10 years, but man, he's still kind of ramrod straight and he's still very structured and he's still deeply committed to that whole way of life. It's all over him. When you know Christ, it's the same. All of a sudden, the family resemblance will show up in you. All of a sudden, his way of thinking will become your way of thinking. All of a sudden, his priorities will start becoming your priorities. I like to say it this way, that God's heart will become your heart. What excites God and delights him will start exciting and delighting you. What grieves him, what burdens him, will start grieving you and burdening you. 
as you become a part of the family of God, a transformation happens, a wonderful transformation. Paul says it this way, we will grow up into the fullness of the stature of Christ. We will become Christ-like, not just followers, but we will be filled with the very spirit and presence of Christ, and we will become Christ to the world. So here's what commissioning requires, two things. I'm going to boil it down to two. The first is, you must know Christ. You personally must know God. And then, in that relationship, as God grows you and equips you, you go out and make God known. You become His representative. You become His ambassador. You become His witness. Your mission is to share Him with others. I know Him. I want others to know Him. What's Christianity all about? Those two things. Knowing God and helping others to know Him. So this is how it starts. Just like reading, researching, speaking to a recruiter, you and I become aware of God. The Spirit of God starts stirring us, awakening us, drawing us back into the arms of God. And as you and I read God's Word, as we have conversation with other Christians, as we finally get to somebody who's a recruiter, and I hope each one of you is a recruiter for God, you can speak to somebody and say, I can tell you how you can become a Christian. You've got to repent. Leave that old way of life. Turn around and start following after God. You've got to put your faith in Jesus. You've got to receive Him as Savior. You've got to surrender to His Lordship. You're under His command. This is how you recruit somebody to become a believer. And then we give our allegiance, our love, our loyalty to Him. And then He starts growing us and teaching us and training us. And all of a sudden, guess what? It's time for us to be deployed he doesn't just do all of that and then put us on a shelf. No, Kelly, he says, now, son, daughter, I'm ready for you to go and shine your Christ light. I'm ready for you to go and teach others what you have learned. I'm ready for you to tell them who I am and how much I love them. All of that is beautifully encapsulated in the Great Commission. All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth, and now I give you authority. I give you power, I give you the challenge to go and preach the gospel, to tell others about the good news of God. What is the good news? That God created us, that we have fallen and lost our way, but God has come to save us. He has sent His Son to shed His blood so that you can be forgiven and I can be forgiven, so that if we'll open our hearts, we can be wonderfully born again, so that we can become indwelt by the very presence of God so that all of us can make our way back into the family of God. The good news. Go and tell others that good news and teach them all the things that I've taught you and baptize them as a sign of that old life that has died and a new life that has started, of a whole new relationship with God and with God's family. And here's the good news. You're not going to do it alone. I will be with you every step of the way. I will empower you. I will remind you, I will give you all the power and authority you need to do a good job. You know, sometimes people ask us to do something and it's kind of difficult. They tell me that sometimes speaking in front of others can be one of the most frightening, terrifying experiences. I don't know if anyone's asked you to maybe get up and share a few thoughts or when you're in school, maybe you have to share a little speech in front of the class your heart's just beating, your mouth dries up, you don't know if you can do it. Well, sometimes serving God can feel that away, like you're nervous. I don't know how to do this. I don't know if I'll be able to do a good job. Jesus says, don't worry about that. I will remind you. I will give you the words. I will teach you. I will train you. God's not going to send you out there and ask you to do something that He won't be with you and give you the power to do. Every step of the way, he is with us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. You and I are in partnership with Jesus in this beautiful discipleship that he speaks of. Go and make disciples of all nations. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about John Wesley. He's very interesting. He grew up kind of like most of us do, kind of going to worship and parents who believe in God and 
getting taught the Bible and all of that. But along the way, even though he believed all that stuff, he struggled inside. He didn't really know if he was right with God. He didn't really know if his sins were forgiven. He didn't really know if he was that disciple he wanted to be. And he really wrestled with that. And if you'll read his story along the way, God speaks to him and gives him assurance. Aldersgate is a significant moment where he feels his heart warmed by God. Something almost physical happens as he realizes that Jesus has really forgiven him his sins, that Jesus has really called him to be a disciple, that he is a part of God's family, not just because he was raised in a Christian family, not just because he went to worship, not just because he knew the Bible, but because something real, kind of like he had signed up, like he was enlisted. I know that I know that this is real. And then a wonderful series of things happen friendships, especially with the Moravians and others, that help him figure out God's plan and purpose more and more. I've told you about him having to preach outdoors, and he didn't want to do that because he thought just going to a sanctuary was the right place to share the good news. But when he was out there in the fields with the common folks, he sensed the power of God and the presence of God, and he saw God working in lives, and he was blown away. And then he said, listen, I'm ready to do whatever and go wherever for God. I'll even be vile for God, even if it's something I don't like, even if I think it's wrong. If God wants me to do it, guess what? I'll go ahead and do it. And then he finally says this, the world is my parish. This is what he's saying. You want to know what my mission is, Miss Donna? It's not Guyman. It's not even Oklahoma. It's the whole world. I believe God wants to save the whole world. And he's called me, he's commissioned me to be a part of saving the world. My congregation, it's not just Victor Memorial. That's what John Wesley was saying. It's everybody that lives on the planet. My congregation is big enough for the world. My mission is big enough for the world. I'm ready to go anywhere and do whatever for God. No restrictions. Did you hear that prayer we prayed? Lord, I will go anywhere. I will do anything. I'll be yoked with anybody. Whatever you want, I'm good with it. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. Let me be employed by you. Let me be laid aside for you. I freely and heartily yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. Now, that's a Marine that he sold out. That is a... <laughs> sailor or a soldier that he sold out to the surf. Listen, I'm ready to lay down my life for what I believe in. That's what John Wesley found. And this is how he found it. The same way every one of us finds it. You've got to know God personally. You've got to know that you're a sinner and that the grace of God can forgive your sins, that the blood of Jesus will wash your sins away, that the Spirit of God will seal you and fill you and empower you to be the man, the woman God wants you to be that he will teach you and equip you so that you can go out and be his representative. You are God's ambassador. I am God's ambassador. Why? Because we know him. We know who he is. We know what he likes. We know what he wants to do. And then he deploys us just like they do today. Woo! They call you up and say, you're off to Iraq. You're off to Afghanistan. You're going to Germany. God deploys us. Now, that might be right where you're working. Rebecca, that might be in Amarillo. Or it might be, yeah, John Despain right here in Guymon or in Goodwill. But what it means is wherever God chooses to send you, you're ready to go. I will go wherever, and I'm ready to do whatever for you. You know why? Because I want others to know you. Listen, God loves you deeply, passionately, with everything in his being and he wants to share that kind of love with you as you go about living your life this is how jesus put it buster let your light so shine before others that they will see your good works and will glorify your father who is in heaven it's nice when people say mark you're doing a good job but it's a whole lot better if they say mark man i see jesus in you my friend and i want to give him honor and glory 
I want to acknowledge God who has touched you and changed you and made you the man of God you are. I love to see what you, what you say and what you do because it speaks of the kingdom of God. Now that's what it means to be commissioned. They'll tell you that when you wear that uniform, you better act right. OJ will tell you when you wear that firefighter uniform or you've got the t-shirt on, it's not just you. You represent the department. Your actions represent us. We want you to go out there and be a good example. And when the scripture asks you and me to go out and represent Christ, each of us has the privilege of revealing heaven and God and God's grace to others. That's what it means to be commissioned. You've got a rank. You've got a responsibility. You've got an authority. And it's for God and God's purpose. And it all boils down to two simple things. You know him personally, and you help others get to know him as well. Go and teach them all that I've taught you. Go and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and make disciples of all nations. Let the world become your parish. Mike Taylor, how big is your congregation? It's the whole world, my friend. God loves this whole wide world and everybody in it. And he's trying his level best to save, to adopt, to include each one as they become blood washed and transformed by grace and a part of that beautiful family. There is no higher commission in all this world than to be commissioned by God, to be called and ordained of God. Yes, we are on a mission. It's a mission from God. It's a mission to love and serve the way Jesus did. It's a mission to tell the good news the best we can. And sometimes when you feel a bit nervous, I don't know if I can do that. I want to remind you who's with you. You have Jesus himself. The very spirit of Jesus is in you. And he has promised to help you no matter what. Do not be afraid. Be bold. Be of good courage. I am with you. Let us pray together. Lord, we are so grateful this morning just to be in worship. We wouldn't be here if you hadn't drawn us. We wouldn't be here if you hadn't awakened us spiritually. We wouldn't be here if your blood hadn't been shed on that cross to wash away our sins. We wouldn't be here if the Holy Spirit wasn't here among us, convicting us, converting us, conforming us to your beautiful image. And Lord, we want to sign up. We want to enlist. If there's anybody here that doesn't know you as Savior, I pray today that each one would open their hearts and say, come in, Lord Jesus. Wash me in your blood. Fill me with your spirit. Make me the man or woman of God you want me to be. And Lord, if we have done that, then we want to enlist for your training. We want to be equipped by you. We want you to send us out to be bearers of good news to all that we meet, family, friends, neighbors. Lord, not just here in Gaiman, not just in the panhandle, but to the uttermost parts of the earth. Oh God, use us. Use us to be a beautiful gift in the lives of others. Make your spirit so very real and active in us so that we will be alive in you. We pray it in Jesus' name and everybody said, amen. We're going to listen and sing together in the next couple of minutes to a couple of hymns and songs. I pray that as we listen, as we sing together, that we will hear the voice of God speaking to us. Whatever you need to do, do it. Whatever God is asking of you to do, I pray that you will do it this morning. Let's remain seated as we sing from our red hymnal, page 591, or you may sing from the screen. Rescue the perishing.
Now we come to the application part, the part where you say, so what do you want me to do, God? And I pray as a disciple, as a follower of Jesus, if you have not transacted that decision with God, if you haven't enlisted in the kingdom of God, if you haven't asked Jesus to come in and be your Savior and your Lord, that you will do so today that you will know that you know, just like John Wesley did, my sins are forgiven. I'm right with God. God has called me and has a purpose for me. If that hasn't happened, please do that. And if I can help in any way, I'll be honored to listen, to pray, to serve, to do whatever I can. I believe God sent me here to help in whatever way you need help in your relationship with God. And then the second thing is, if you are in the family of God, if you have been born again, I pray that you will be trained and equipped to go out and be God's ambassador, to be commissioned, that you'll wear your rank, whatever it is that God has seen fit to give you as you take responsibility for others. Now, I must remind you that you can't save the world before you have saved one. Find one. Find one somebody to start praying for. Find one somebody that you can buy lunch for, that you can maybe buy a book and say, here's something to help you with your relationship with God. Find one who you can say, come and join us in worship. Come and study the Bible together. Come to men's breakfast. Find somebody to invest your life into. And when you have one, who knows, God might help you make a real disciple out of one. And then two and three and maybe 10. Wouldn't that be nice, William? At the end of your life, you can see 10 people that are there with you because of an investment that you made in their lives. It's very practical, folks. Your prayers for others, your gifts, your service, your relationship. So I'm going to challenge you. Ask God to show you what little things you can do that will help others take a step closer to Him. We're going to sing the Spirit song in preparation for intercession. God has given us the awesome responsibility and the honor of praying for others in their hour of need. And we're going to do that collectively in just a few minutes. Let's sing together Spirit Song. Oh. 
I want to invite any who would like to come and kneel here at the chancel rail to come and join me. The rest may remain in the pews and just sit there as we pray together, as we intercede for the needs of others. Father in heaven, what a privilege it is this morning to bend the knee, to bow our heads, to open our hearts to you, the living God. There is no other. You alone are God. You alone can save. You alone are worthy of our service, our love, our sacrifice. Lord, we want to pour it out for you this day. And so we ask you today to come and fill your lands. Come, O God, burn within us. Come, O God, compel us so that we can join Paul in saying the love of God compels me to go. So that we can say with Jesus, I must be about the Father's business. So that we can end our days and say, it is finished. I have done what God wanted me to do. I've accomplished God's mission. O God, help us to catch a hold of who you are and what you want to do in our lives and through our lives. Lord, we are honored to be called intercessors, to stand in the gap for others, to cry out with you for their help, their healing, their deliverance. Lord, we remember the cancer sufferers, Leanne Chafin, whose cancer has returned. Be with Miss Leanne today. Touch her, help her healer. We're praying for Robin Henshi and Sheridan Henshi who also have cancer. Lord, help them as they figure out how to treat them but we are asking for more than treatment. We're asking for your healing touch upon their bodies in the name of Jesus. We're praying for Charity Hitch, who also has cancer. Lord, please help her and heal her. We wrap her up in love and prayers this morning. Lord, we're praying for Buster Talbot. So good to see him in worship with us today. Help him with his grief. Help him with his Parkinson's. We're asking for your healing touch upon Talbot's life. Bless him real good this morning. Be with Patsy Ayers as she suffers with renal failure. Help her with dialysis. Help her with her congestive heart failure. We are asking for your continued help and healing. We pray for Bernice Barker, 106 years old, healing from a broken hip. Lord, touch her even now as she's in bed. Help her with those bed sores. Raise her up, Lord. Bless her real good this morning. We're looking to you. Lord, there are many among us who have addictions. There are many among us whose marriages are struggling. There are many among us, O oh God, who are asking for direction. And we're asking for your help and healing. We're asking for your deliverance in their lives. Be with Andy Brown and his family as they grieve the loss of his mom. And all of those who remember their loved ones with fondness this morning. Some who just recently have lost a husband, a wife, a child. A parent, Lord, be the God of all comfort to them. And Lord, we pray for this nation of ours. My heart is broken for these United States of America. We seem to have lost our way. We seem to have forgotten you. We seem to be rebellious before you, O oh God. I'm crying out for your mercy and grace. I'm praying, O oh Lord, that we can be redeemed, that we can be restored, that we can become a city set on a hill for you. Have mercy on us and bring us back to true faith and true discipleship for you as we join together and pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I have a beautiful YouTube music video this morning that I would like you to listen to, and I pray that as you listen to it, you will hear the voice of God speaking to you, challenging you. Let's enjoy that together. Deserves a course he does there's nothing more wonderful than the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord please stand with me oh yes covenant membership please be seated 
I missed Com McCune family. Woohoo! I almost forgot. The McCunes, my beloved McCune family, Chris, Brooke, Kennedy, give me your hand, <laughs> Cam, they have finally decided to become covenant members this morning, and I'm so excited about that. It's a big deal. It's a commitment to be deeply involved and to grow and serve in this part of God's church. We are not better than anybody else. We are just a part of the family, a sold out, spirit filled part of God's family across the planet. And I'm so glad to have them as a part of that covenant. I'm gonna ask them the historic question, whether they'll be faithful in prayers, presence, gift, service, and witness. And then I'm gonna remind you and ask you that same question as we commit afresh to the Lordship of Christ and we commit our lives to serving Him right here in Gaiman, America. Chris, Brooke, Cam, Kennedy, will you be faithful in your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness as you live under the Lordship of Christ and serve here among us in this part of God's church? And church, I ask you, I challenge you, will you be faithful in your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness as you live under the Lordship of Christ and as you welcome and encourage and support Chris, Brooke, Cam, and Kennedy to become the fully devoted disciples that Jesus wants them to be? Let's pray together. Lord, it is a great honor, a joy to welcome the McCune family into fellowship, into covenant fellowship with you and with us today. And all of us together, we renew our vows. We are sold out to you, Lord Jesus. And we want you to grow us and mature us and use us as your instruments of grace. We pray it in your strong name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Here's your certificate of covenant membership. They'll be at the back of the church so you can welcome them and hug their necks. Woohoo! Hallelujah. Now, stand with me. I still have one minute before 12. Right here on my left are dear friends and family in Christ. Mark McAdow, his beautiful wife, Robin, their daughter, Lauren. They've come for the wedding that we had here for Sarah Jenkins yesterday. They've stayed the weekend. They came and worshiped with us. Love this brother. Love his love for Christ. So glad to have them with us. May God bless you and use you, brother, for the rest of your days. Amen. And there's a brother from South Africa, Reuben Russ. He is part of a harvest team here in Gaiman, just recently arrived. So glad to welcome Reuben among us. He's working for the Haydens. And so I'm looking forward to stronger friendships and, and adventures together while he's here working with them. Reuben, welcome among us. And of course, each of you are honored guests. It was so good to have family with us. Uh, with the McCune, so welcome among us. Come anytime. I pray that our lives would be full of worship and joy as we serve Christ. Receive God's blessing and God's challenge as you leave worship and go into the mission field that God has called you to serve in. Romans chapter 15, reading from verse 5 and verse 6. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice we may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.